Hey, I'm Devin, and we are back with more XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. So we are still in a bit of a mad rush towards the end of the game here, trying to get this uh, knocked out before I move. We had a bit more of the game left than I realized last time, so we are going to try and use the Skulljack on the Codex, kill the Avatar, uh, do the autopsy on that Avatar, and then I'm hoping we are actually at the end of the game. So we'll see how many problems we encounter in the meantime. But that is our general plan for the stream tonight. So fortunately, we have just got a very good mission popping up for us um, for that. Uh, we have this council mission in New Australia. Only seven enemies, which is really good, including a codex and nothing too scary. Like, no sectopods, no gatekeepers... Not even any Andromedons or anything. Like, I almost wonder if the game's cheating a little and giving us a super easy mission for us to uh, get this Codex result. That said, seven enemies is a really low number, and we are in Hunter territory, so I would not be at all surprised if the Hunter uh, shows up. In fact, I think I would probably bet on it. So we've got a pretty good um, roster here. Uh, basically only got... A low-level troop wounded from a recent covert op. Um, one ranger in uh, negative trait recovery. And everyone else is available for this next mission. So, in pretty good shape here. Uh, we do have a couple um, neuroses on our Templar that I would like to deal with at some point. But we definitely don't uh, need to do that now. So also swung over um, by the black market to uh, see how things are going over here. Uh, they want faceless corpses and turret wrecks. Do want to hold on to two faceless corpses just in case we uh, want to build ourselves a second mimic beacon. But I'm pretty happy uh, throwing away our turret wreck. The real reason I came over here was to see what they're doing for PCSs. Uh, especially since uh, we've got that new enhanced PCS um ability so and they do have a superior per speed and a superior perception uh definitely want the perception probably the best pcs in the game for a uh, plus 12 aim think i'll probably pass on this speed for now like i've heard of people using this on rangers but honestly just like we're really trying to avoid ever taking fire right now um, not really interested in rushing either of these pieces of research. Could pick up a superior scope. It's only 20 intel, and we're hoping to get uh, 92 off of this mission. So I think I'm comfortable spending that. I don't know exactly where we're at on which weapons, but I feel like we've certainly got someone who can use it. Uh, we do have a couple facilities available that we can do runs on if the Avatar project gets too out of hand. Uh, and both of them do have alien rulers. Only seven enemies, though. That's pretty wild. So, I mean, we would also have to deal with an alien ruler, but that's not too bad. How many are over at the other facility, just out of curiosity? Yeah, so these are both pretty uh, small numbers of enemies, considering we bring, we're bring we bringing a pretty powerful squad of six in at this point. Anyways, council mission in New India. India. Uh, so the big thing we're going to want to bring here is uh, making sure we have the tools to get the Skulljack the Codex, which means definitely want a um, specialist with the uh, Skulljack. And then also bringing uh, double Frost Bombs is really nice for locking that Codex down. Got the Mimic Beacon. This squad actually looks pretty perfect. We can basically just bring the same squad we uh, had last time. Uh, take a quick look at the Skywatch. Um, see what its weapon upgrades are. Uh... So you have... She has the advanced perception. Oh yeah, and we actually got the perk where we can trade out personal combat sims. So I'd be happy to trade um, her out. Because then we still get to keep the advanced perception. 
Oh, it's interesting. We can't actually trade out for the weaker one. And then she already has a superior scope and a superior autoloader, which are the two weapons we uh, want on that sniper rifle. Got the disruptor rifle over here. Is there anything else we want to do with this squad? Um, you probably don't have a PCS. We could give you... You know, I like giving him the aim one. He's a little more of our cannoneer of our two grenadiers. Um, and while I wouldn't want to use a superior perception on him, using our slightly lower level one actually seems like a nice swap. Superior Expanded Mag and Hair Trigger both sound fine. And then most of these weapons aren't weapons that can take upgrades anyway. We could just... Uh, he's only got the Advanced Scope, so we could just replace this with the Superior Scope for 5 extra aim. We use this weapon a lot. I think I'd be pretty comfortable with that. Uh... All right, so we've got our frost bombs. We've got pretty standard squad here. Probably the psychic is the most easily flexible of this lineup. If we wanted to bring in, I like. We don't need a reaper on a mission against seven enemies. We don't have anyone we really want to level up. Yeah, I'm happy bringing our uh, psi operative here. I don't get to use Psy, Psy Operatives that much, so it's fun to kind of give them a try. So we are going to be trying to subdue and capture an Advent VIP. Uh, last time we tried to do this, their car exploded for reasons that I'm sure were entirely not our fault. Uh, so this time we will try to have no control over that, because... I'm sure it wasn't our fault we killed that guy last time. Alright, capture or kill VIP. So the only seven enemies on the map, um, probably three pods, and all pretty light. Like, we are still expecting the... Um, chosen to show up but we know there's three um full retinue of basic advent troops and the scariest things on the map are the codexes and archons so i assume we'll just lose everyone given uh my statements of extreme confidence um so we're starting out in this corner and we're kind of sliding along this side of the map i guess I think I like uh, pushing up pretty aggressively on top of this building because we are um, on a pretty harsh timer. This is an evac mission timer, so anyone who doesn't make it to the drop zone is automatically captured. So we do need to make a pretty good amount of haste. And this lets us use our high mobility to make our farthest move first get all the way up here and then post start posting up some snipers and stuff on top of this building all right so yeah this looks like a pretty good pod to try and uh skulljack so we're going to be looking to get our sniper on top of the building so she can only move to there so we don't want her to block the ramp if anyone else can get farther uh yeah, most people can't get as far as our ranger because she has the crazy mobility PCS installed. So we'll probably be taking at least a full turn to set up on these guys. Or this turn and then another full turn to set up on these guys and then going. Just given that we're pretty far away. All right, and then 
We do want Crypto very far forward since uh, she is the one who's going to have to get into melee range. And Psychic can go next. I am a little nervous about having our Sniper exposed up here, just because if they patrol all the way up to her, they could potentially get a flank shot, so that was probably uh, not actually a great risk for us to be taking there. And then I was hoping one of these guys would be able to get all the way up to the robot. Or you... Oh yeah, we got another um, resistance squad uh, person. That's nice. I do just like having uh, some random uh, normal human beings along with the uh, crazy superhero squads we're bringing on these missions. Hmm. I would like to get him a little far for farther forward to potentially make use of Salvo, but I really don't want to risk any chance of uh, our troops flanking themselves. Alright, so we could move you forward to get full vision on these guys. But there's actually not that much upside to doing that. I'd much rather get Sniper in position first. Alright, so now we've got full vision on this entire group. So this would actually not be a crazy place to blow concealment. Yeah, we can... So if we summon an avatar this turn, can we deal with it? Is the real question here. And I think pretty sure the answer is yes. So, if you were to, I assume you can't frostbond this whole group from there, but if you were to push up, so like, let's say we move the robot up a little. Then we pull... The grenadier around to here. Understood. Moving out. Frost bomb this group just so that the whole thing is dealt with. Take this. So this way we've got them locked down, even if we fail to deal with the uh, codex. Or even if we fail to deal, if we miss on the Skulljack. And then you can run up and go for the Skulljack. And hopefully this doesn't expose another pod. Looks like we're good there. Awesome. And this is actually our hacker, so we've got a reasonable chance of picking up some intel. I could have got the smaller one, but this one was better EV. Uh, the small, the large Intel cache is twice as large, so this one was, and this one was more than twice as good a chance. All right. So step one. Commander, I believe we are seeing something huh. entirely new. I wonder why it's showing up with partial health. Is that? Like it's missing the health we took from the Codex? Or is this like, normally this is an easy mode one, and it's just something to do with the way we got it set up that's making it... Um... This would normally be... Sorry, just to try and finish my thought. This would normally be an easier one, and the fact that we've got this uh, health tip mod, mod on is making it show up as being damaged rather than just starting with lower health. So this is an easy enough group in general that I think I'm comfortable just using the blaster bomb, stripping its armor, seeing where it teleports to, and killing it with the ranger. All 
Alright, so got all of its armor, and we'll see where it teleports to. Alright, and then, um, I believe pretty strongly in your ability to kill this, so where do you want to do that from? So... You know, we're not going to get your uh, cover anyway, so we can just go here. And you know what? I believe in you so much that I'm not even going to uh, use rapid fire. I'm just going to totally trust in your ability to one-shot this guy. Alright, and my trust is justified. Okay, so... We've already succeeded at the number one thing we came here to do. So, off to a good start. Uh, I guess we might as well kill these two guys since we're here. It's interesting that you can't see that shield bearer. I guess it's just a little bit of a weird angle. So, you might as well try and strip the armor off that guy. And then we can finish him off with a pistol shot. You can't handle me. All right, and then so that is you are the only person left with actions. Good copy. Moving on target. And we'll go ahead and let you uh, take your shot at um, Glory. So, 86, but this guy's frozen, so even if this misses, we're not in any trouble. Alright. And the resistance fighter pulls through. Yep, and I was right. We do have a chosen this mission. Alright. You know, I almost wonder if it's uh, tactically good for us to have left this guy alive, just because... He poses relatively little threat to us so far. And it does actually help to disable the mission timer while he's around. And also uh, gives us XP every time we beat him. So we're kind of just benefiting from him existing at this stage of the game. Oh, it doesn't pause the timer. I guess there are some mission types that pause the timer when the Chosen's around. I thought that was more of a thing, though. Alright, so... We've killed three enemies. There's four enemies left on the map, plus the Chosen. We're a little scattered. We do have a bunch of tools available. Like, we could run and gun her all the way up to, you know somewhere here but i do feel like we want to keep pushing forward somewhat so you can move up to here you're not really benefiting Let, let's just pull the group together not a problem. keep the sniper on the high ground Tighten up the group in general, throw down a few overwatches while they're free, but mostly just uh, get everyone pointed the right direction. Uh, how far can you run up, Julia? <laughs> Super dead avatar. So this is pretty low risk for exposing enemies. Um, might as well check... I mean, it's not really useful. Oh, this is our specialist. 
Yeah, this is actually useful. Um, it's not useful on the uh, mech who can hack objectives, but has a really low hack score. Huh. So let's keep the disorientation in the bank. Well, it could be good against the Chosen. Roger that. All right, and you can just overwatch. And you can long watch. Overwatch. <laughs> just doing his usual uh, parkour exercises while he waits for us to show up. Just running, grappling, and running in circles. Okay, can you get in... Oh, you're one square away from opening this door. Is anyone in range of opening the door? Also one square away. Many squares away. So the, it's pretty likely there's a pot in there. Um... We can leave our sniper on high ground. It's probably more useful to, like, grapple them over. I know that... We could just sprint through the door. The Chosen's a ways away. I mean, I am feeling somewhat rushed, but... We've got time. Let's just all set up on this door. So who do we actually want on po in position on the door? That is probably our Grenadier and our Sniper. So our Sniper can't actually get there. Our Grenadier can move up to here. And we'll see if that exposes any enemies. Nope. All right. And everyone else will probably be moving pretty close into that. Uh, yeah, let's just put our specialist on this side, which means we should have probably gone for the hack last turn. And then we'll... Stock up our mech here. Ranger here. Resistance fighter can't actually make it particularly close to there. Uh, I think we want our sniper there. It's kind of pulling everyone into a tight little ball to push through this door into the VIP and whatever else is going to cause us problems in there. Alright. Uh, Overwatch. Yeah, not surprising. So the chosen man to no, nope. nothing. Uh, open the door. So that didn't activate, but presumably whatever happens next will. Tired of waiting around. VIP in tow here. Target identity confirmed. All right, so we've got the target. I uh, assumed they would be in here, so let's go ahead and push our range trap. Uh, go ahead and subdue him. Her. I would guess the resistance fighter can carry her. I'm actually a little bit worried, though. Uh, 
when we had the Resistance Fighter pick up an Illyrium Core, they stole it? So I'll admit I'm a little nervous about trusting them to uh, carry an important VIP. So, if we're not trusting the Resistance Fighter, I think we use our Specialist. And this is leaving them out of cover, but it shouldn't be possible for this to expose more enemies. And then we'll just pull everyone else up and overwatch. Just throw down some overwatches, and we'll pick this guy up and keep moving towards the evac zone. The reinforcements behind us. Uh, well, so we will want to carry this guy, but let's actually wait until we've pushed forward first. So we're pushing towards the evac zone. Would be good to fight a Chosen if we can, because we get points for that. Wow, we are really just not exposing anything. I am noting that this is explosive, um, so I'm just generally leery about having anything to do with it. I feel like it should be safe to move up to here, because we can just already see most of this room. Um... All right, so the plan is probably going to be burst out this door, probably fight some people immediately on the other side, and that'll get us to the evac zone. So, let's go ahead and set up people we want on the sides of the doors. So let's see if the resistance fighter can pick this guy up just out of curiosity can, but we're not going to. Has two different options to do it, weirdly. Alright, and then we will want to set up the sniper on one side of the door and the grenadier on the other, because they're the two people who benefit the most from having uh, both of their actions available, from uh, sniping and salvo respectively. Got it. Moving. All right. And then everyone else can just kind of generally pull in towards the door. So you are indeed going to be on enemy VIP duty. VIP located. On my way. All right. And then can go ahead and post you up here. Post Julie up the other side. And uh, breach of this door next turn. Making uh, strong progress. I can handle that. Right. Overwatch. Overwatch. And turn. So we do have reinforcements coming in behind us, but I don't know if they're active or know where we are. Also not the most threatening pod in the world. Okay, so they are popping in uh, right behind us. Ah, oh, that's a sad miss. So we can decide, do we want to spend a turn just fighting these guys, or do we want to uh, open this door up and see what's on the other side of there, too? Alright, so forcing our sniper to move is somewhat annoying. Um, uh, we probably don't want to... This is nice because it flanks all three. We do need to get some armor shred on this guy.
six turns left. I feel like six turns is enough that we just don't need to open this door this turn. But... Alright. You've got Shred. You've got Shred. How about you run up and shred this fellow? Seems doable. Oh wait, can you just sword him for a hundred percent? Yeah, that's the thing. Well, actually, let's open the door. Oh, you can probably Reaper all three of these guys. I mean, we know there's an Archon somewhere in the map. We shouldn't be crazy overconfident. There's just not that much reason to... Uh, go crazy here and open this door. I mean, it would be fun. That's a reason. Six turns is a lot of turns. Alright, so we've got to move you somewhere. So let's just have you slash this guy, because it's 100% guaranteed to kill him. Technically, we could even have you shoot someone else and then just blade storm that guy, but it's nice to be able to kind of just check off problems. So then... You can get to, like, here, where you're flanking both, here I come. and go ahead and throw down lightning hands just for funsies. Perfect. And then pistol shot on this guy. Oh, that was a larger explosion radius than I predicted. Okay, so that actually ended up going way worse than other plans could have. So 94% to finish here. Alright, uh, Medic, set that man down. Uh, oh, we could scanning protocol, but we're actually here for... Get a heal on her. And also shredded armor. That's pretty rough. Reload. And then just overwatches on everyone else. Seems fine. Okay, so these guys wandered into us. Interesting. I, I wonder what makes these guys choose whether to overwatch to start or uh, walk somewhere. Alright, so he's tracking us again. Alright, so step one, open this door, see if um, this is going to activate any enemies. Fortunately, did not. So I'm pretty happy moving you up to here and seeing if that does anything. Nope, and we're now out of the tracking mark range. And then get to shred up this heavy mech. Oh, I was wondering why I was seeing these orange damage numbers on everything. It's because we got the pulse weapons upgrade that's just damage on, uh... 
all types of that's uh, extra damage on all plasma weapons. So that's really great. Alright, so how are we on time? We've got five turns to get out of here. And there are only two enemies left on the map. As you wish. Plus the Chosen. Wait, uh, oh yeah, there none of them are dead yet. We're just thinking of them as dead. Okay, so who wants to do what? So it'd be kind of fun to just have you walk over here and then um, face off. Finally. I do enjoy doing that. One, two, three. All right. So, does anyone here actually need a level? I think everyone here might be max level. Uh, so let's uh, give this last shot to uh, the Resistance Fighter. Which is partially out of the goodness of our hearts. Partially strategy to save more valuable overwatches. So you get a reload. And I'll pull you up. No problem, boss. And you can go ahead and pick up some loot. Nice. Advanced agility. And you want to get this guy. We probably should have healed our... Uh... Ranger, but it's fine. And turn... Alright, so this, this turn timer is still making me nervous, but we're actually not too bad. Like, even if we spend two turns on the Chosen, two turns on a pod, we still have another turn to run away. So... Let's go ahead and overdrive you. And run you over into a nice good flanking position on this fellow. Oh, he had an overwatch up. That's fine. And then we will shred him with 100% to hit. And then we will have Julia just kind of casually run up and do her thing. This probably won't be quite enough to uh, kill him straight up, but we'll do a good chunk. Sixteen. Twenty-five. Yeah, not too bad. So just to think about it real quick, I believe everyone else on the team is a colonel. Oh, can can we not get in sight range to shoot him with our uh, resistance fighter? Because that would be nice. Alright, resistance fighter, here is your shot at heroism. You are going to try and kill a chosen. 
you will be forever remembered among the annals of level zero heroes if you manage this. Very nice. Cool, so then we'll just start pulling people towards the exit, throw down some overwatches, and we'll probably be able to evac in a turn or two. And if we meet something, we'll fight it, but we wouldn't even really need to have to. <laughs> yes, we did. Alright, you, can you get all the way up to here? Yeah, that's where I want you. I want you carrying our uh, unconscious friend up to the robot. Alright, uh, everyone else, get an evac range. Alright, and should be good. Throw down a couple of overwatches. But mostly we're just uh, on our way out at this point. Okay, so you probably cannot quite make it out. So I would like to uh, wait one more turn to uh, let our resistance friend get out the same turn as the rest of us. So we can... Uh, Kind of walk people up a little bit here. I can so that. we didn't ever fight the Archon Pod, so it's still around here somewhere. So we should be a little careful about that. Alright, that gets you in range. I believe everyone else is already in range. We can pull people up a little bit just to be safe, but... Overwatch, Overwatch. Overwatch. Let's do this. Overwatch. Covering now. Overwatch. Enter. All right. Huh? We never saw that Archon. It's weird that it didn't show us as there being a turn there. I wonder if... why that is. So not getting quite maximum out P XP out of this mission, but getting the 5 AP off of the Chosen is nice. I guess we're not getting any XP. There's no point in farming when every single person we're bringing is a colonel. Got it. Up, oh, misclick. And everybody out. All right. Well, not quite a flawless mission because we uh, underestimated the explosive radius of a purifier. I wonder if it gets bigger for advanced purifiers. But uh, got the flawless mission, extracted the VIP, and got the story mission, which is the real thing we were caring about. Wounding is also not as bad at this point, just because being shattered is actually way worse, just because we can throw someone in the infirmary or even go to the uh, Heal Faster, or I think Templar HQ, to uh, get people back on their feet faster. Or even use uh, the Hyper Vital modules for the final mission. So yeah, only six days each. Oh, I forgot we were getting you up to... Uh, if we wish to destroy the Colonel. Permanent. I would have uh, focused more on putting XP onto her if I realized she wasn't already a Colonel. Commander, although I firmly believe the specimen we have recovered is crucial to the alien's effort. Avatar Corpse and enemy VIP. Inez Martins. New objectives added. 
Okay, so I'm actually going to finish off our sword research um, before we uh, do the story mission, just because swords are cool. I would like to staff someone in the infirmary, so we'll go ahead and pull you out of the ring. Put you into the infirmary. Anywhere in particular we were scanning? Oh, knock a couple progress off of here for a story event. Work, Commander. Having defeated this unknown entity. Yeah, once you get going on the story missions, you just don't really need to worry about that much about the Avatar project for a while. Right, Intel or region income? Definitely Intel not close. Oh, we were going to finish making contact with Australia, though. Australia. So we'll finish off our swords down here. Hang out in Australia and figure out how to make good sword. We've located the Elders Hunter, actively working in this region. And then we will go start on some intel. And as soon as our swords are up, uh, go ahead and start that avatar autopsy. Our cooperation has proven to be a cool. To the resistance. Didn't really care about a facility lead, but that's fine. New? Sure. Uh, you can keep getting aim. Wait, so this is... Yeah, moderate wound, no capture. That's fine. We'll just keep sending uh, these guys on some missions. I'll order my people to get underway immediately. What? Just almost finished up on those swords. Nice. Got domination on her. Uh, sustain, that's great. This will prove to have been an important breakthrough. Alright. Got that breakthrough. Um no other things we need to do here, so definitely want to do that shadow project. Nine days. All negative traits removed. Uh, can we put... So I could have sworn our Templar was afraid of, like, vipers and fire and other random things. Are you... Did we just already deal with that? I guess so. Got an avatar trophy on the wall. A nice to see our little trophy wall with the uh, DLC stuff. Processing of all non-essential human life to begin. Uh, fortress. All right, so we're just nine days until the end of the game. We're just seeing what essential missions come up in the meantime. All right, so got our. Uh, Two wounded soldiers back here. Doesn't matter a whole lot, but we can pull our engineer out of the infirmary and pop him back into the resistance ring. Alien facility coordinates locked in, Commander. Yep. Yeah, I know the Avatar project's doing a bunch of shit. We're going to go destroy them. Even if it jumps into the timer mode, we're basically fine at this point. Five days, four days to the end of the game, I think. I was wrong last time, but we'll see. Fuse is fine. Oh, we don't have anywhere to scan. Build faster, heal faster. I guess we just gain intel for three days. We could just make contact with uh, the world if we've got some extra intel to spend. 
Alright, so he can attack the Avenger. Applies rupture to the target. That's amazing. Two Illyrian cores. That's fun. So, just to check. Alright, so we're three days from what I believe is the end of the game, but I could be wrong again. Um... We don't really have time to build any more armor or anything. Yeah, so there's nothing that's not instant that we would want to build. We could just, you know, throw together some experimental grenades. Oh, powered weapons. We're actually short on these. Cool, plasma blaster. We didn't have one of those. That'll be a good one to bring. Um, so yeah. We're three days from the end of the world, so a uh, buddy cop movie. Could go to Soldier Bond. What What do um, Calamity and uh, her partner want to be doing when the world ends? Can they... Are they high enough level to do this? Calamity and Claymore. So no, only a captain. None of these sound as adventurous as I was kind of hoping for. This, this sounds right. They, they want to be uh, reducing the ap avatar project progress at this point. Calamity and Claymore off on their wild adventures. All right, three days. Gorilla Ops. You know what? Part of me wants to skip this mission, but I, I, I think that would be unsportsmanlike. Let's go ahead and do uh, one last Gorilla Op before the end of the world. Uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and uh, take a quick break here. So um, thank you to everyone for watching. And uh, we will be back in five minutes for what is hopefully our last gorilla op. Thanks to everyone for watching.